Two of the top three teams in Colorado for a football square off with Mountain Conference supremacy at stake. If you can't get excited for this, see your cardiologist and get checked for a pulse. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to High School Football on Channel 8. I'm Bill Rogan, along with former CU tight end, number 81, Justin Adams. We thank you for tuning in. And Justin, it's awfully cold out here tonight, no doubt about that. But we have two very hot teams entering this game. Well, that's why both teams are, you have Broomfield, the top ranked team in 4A, and that's why you have Marnock, number three in 4A. Marnock on a six game winning streak, Broomfield on a seven game winning streak. And if Broomfield wants to make it an eight game winning streak, they're gonna need to stop the powerful running attack of Monarch. Get this for Monarch, they average 40 points per game and they average over 275 yards on the ground per matchup. For Broomfield, they're gonna have they're going to have to stop this running attack because pretty much that's all that Monarch does. But they can't fall asleep on Monarch's passing game. They don't use it much, but it's effective. How about this? Five touchdown passes on only ten completions for Monarch's passing attack. That's uh, fifty percent according to my stats. Not bad. Now Broomfield, they're more diversified offensively. But again, they're going to need to run the ball as well. Well, it all comes down to Angelo Perez. Um, he's a dual threat quarterback. Uh, Broomfield, they averaged themselves over 190 yards on both sides, running and passing. That's going to be the key today, especially since they lost two linemen in Justin D. Michelle and Andrew McLean. And that, those are two very big losses. Broomfield got a lift today, actually last night when Gary Davies returned, the head coach. He was out for a couple of weeks on administrative leave over what turned out to be a minor sideline altercation. That's in the past. Gary's excited to be back, but he was, he was kind of hurt by that. Yeah. And can we just say again, very minor, glad to have the coach back, see him again again uh, in front of his players. He was gone for two weeks, and he said, and I quote, this has been the worst two weeks of his life overall. And I'm just glad to see him back. The team is glad to see him back. We'll see how they respond in a big matchup today. And before we get up to the warm booth, Justin, I did bring a heater. Uh, the weather could be a factor in tonight's game. Yes, it's 22 degrees outside. We were talking to referees a little bit before, and it's going to dip. It's going to be at least 15 degrees towards the fourth quarter. So the main part of, of the game when it's cold is that the ball gets harder, which uh, favors Monarch. Yeah, got to hold on to the ball. Ball security will be preached. Yes, you turn over the ball, you lose. We talk about that all the time. Absolutely. So it's Monarch against Broomfield. Should be a good one. We'll be back with the opening kickoff after this. And the Broomfield Eagles take the field, bursting through the banner. And we are set to go. Moments away from kickoff between the seven and one, visiting Monarch Coyotes and the seven and one Broomfield Eagles in their home park. Last year, Monarch defeated Broomfield twice here at Elizabeth Kennedy Stadium. They whipped up on Broomfield 42 to 14. Worst game of the year last year for the Eagles. In the playoffs, it was closer, but Monarch eliminated Broomfield 23 to 21. So you know there are plenty of Eagles who would like to get a little measure of revenge for that. Monarch, they are coming off a 56 to 15 trouncing of George Washington. And as Justin mentioned in the opening, they have won six in a row. Broomfield has won seven straight. And they're coming off a 31 to 22 victory over Montbello. You're familiar with that program, Justin? Just a little bit. My alma mater graduated there 2004. Uh, the football team hasn't been the same ever since I left. I'll just put it that way. They're better. <laughs> Our officials tonight, the referee is Kirk Russell. The umpire is Dale Eifen. The head linesman, Steve Crockett. The side judge, Scott Lewis. And the back judge, Ron Bellows. And it's very cold here, Justin. Do you have a weather forecast, my friend? Well, it's again, as we spoke of in the opens, talking to the referees, 22 degrees. It's clear. Uh, there's not a cloud in the sky. But again, it's in the low 20s, and it will be throughout the rest of the game. How do you know there's not a cloud in the sky? It is dark. We are set to go. <laughs> just, uh, just a guess. I'll put that Kicking way. off for the 
Eagles will be Paul Hansen. He's a sophomore. And deep for Monarch is Jalen Alexander, as well as Bruce Oliver. And the kick, line to Alexander. He has it in the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And it looked like Alexander really wanted to run that one out. But Hansen gets it into the end zone, and we're set to go. And unfortunately, our monitor is not set to go. It somehow has turned off. Well, it, it's cold, too. It needs a little bit of a time just Hopefully to warm it'll up. Hopefully to warm up. <laughs> so we'll give you the call without the aid of a monitor for now. There you are. No wind, which is fortunate. It is very cold, but the wind, not a factor right now. The flag to our right, to the south, is hanging limp. And here's the pitch right away. The running attack gets 10 yards. That's Ethan Marks. So a good start. And they move the chains, 10 yards. Your first play of the game, Ethan Marks going on the left side of the offense on the quick pitch. A huge part of their offense, very important to get him going. He is close to 700 yards and it's Marks again. Runs into a wall of tacklers and Broomfield's crowd on their feet as they always are here. They applaud that first good defensive play of the night. No gain, call it second down and 10, ball at the 31 yard line. Coyotes in white, head coach Phil Bravo in his ninth year. Last season, Monarch was close to a championship but fell short, losing to Pine Creek in the semifinals, 20 to nothing to cap a 12 and one season. Now we have an official's timeout. Not sure what this is about. Oh, an equipment problem. Looks like Drew Davies for Broomfield getting his shoulder pad tucked back in. Drew Davies, the captain, also coach's son. He's been ill all day. We won't get into it, but not pleasant. Spending a lot of time in the bathroom. Here's Marks again. Out to the 50-yard line before he's finally tackled by Kyle Holbrook. And the far side, they're going nuts. The Coyotes fans. Second first down of this drive. First and 10 at the 50-yard line for the Coyotes. Both plays are on quick pitches as just Ethan Marks takes the ball on the outside to his right. Great blocking. And you can just see how he just protects the ball and drives all the way for a first down. And it's Marks again. He gets tripped up but falls forward for four yards, maybe five. Tackled on the play by Nathan Aragon, the senior. Bill Marks has been has averaged 113 yards per game this season, so very crucial uh, part of the offense for Monarch. Marks will split a little bit to the left. They pack everything in. Also is Kid Sewell who gets the ball, and Sewell gets two yards before he's pushed back. Loose ball, but I think the whistle had blown. So it'll bring up a third and four. And Gary Davies, the head coach of Broomfield, said that even third and long for Monarch is a running situation. Well, because they only have passed the ball 18 times this season, Bill. And, you know, especially with the type of running offense and the run rushing attack that Monarch has, you could see why they would choose to run the football rather than pass it. And the quarterback for Monarch is Cole Watson. Watson gives to Marks. He's free. Across the 30, down the sideline before he's barreled out of bounds by Dan Purse. But another first down for Monarch. And already chewing up big yards is Marks. Yes, Bill, every run play has been the same. Uh, every big play running play for Monarch has been the same. Marks outside on a quick pitch to the left or to the right. The last two long running plays for Marks have been to the right side of the offense. Ethan Marks, five carries, 60 yards in the early going. And we have an official's timeout. Or it might have been a Broomfield timeout. We'll see if we get the indication from Kirk Russell. Not Kurt Russell, the movie actor. Kirk Russell, no relation. Oh, I see why the stoppage. The scoreboard has gone out. 
<laughs> so we'll have a, a quick delay while they fix the scoreboard as the lights have gone out. And then we do have some impact players in this game. Uh, Justin, take it away. Well, let's start off with uh, Broomfield High School, and we'll see this guy later on in the game. Angela Perez, quarterback. Um, very important part of the offense for Broomfield, the dual threats. As I spoke about earlier, he has four touchdown passes on the season. Uh, three interceptions, uh, most of them have came earlier in the year. But what makes this guy special is that, again, he can run the ball on the ground. 208 yards rushing and five touchdowns. Also, Dan Purse, the senior, he's a captain. 22 uh, receptions, 263 yards, receiving yards, and three touchdowns of his own. And my guy to really look out for today is Ryan McCulley. Um, on the season, he only has 525 yards rushing, but it is going to be very important for him to have a big day for Broomfield to win today. And then on Monarch, you've seen this guy already, what, three carries, four carries, 60 yards already in this game. Ethan Marks, he's only a junior, a huge part to this rushing, at, um, rushing attack for Monarch. Then you have Philip Burbernack, um, also another running back, who, had, who leads the team with nine touchdowns. And lastly, you have Kid Soleil. Uh, who's a sophomore. Last week he had 11 carries for a buck 38 and three touchdowns. So those are uh, the impact players to look out for today. You say Kid Sole? I thought it was Kid Sewell. Well, Kid Sewell. We'll go with Sewell. How Sewell. about Kid Sewell? There we go. Kid, I like that. Although his real name is... I'm not sure what it is. Oh, it's Logan. <laughs> we have a little bit of everything going on here, huh? Getting the power <laughs> fixed here. We had the heater in our booth go out for a while, and then we moved it to another outlet, and now it's working. It just so happens to be the outlet by our stat man, Connor Shreve. Yeah, just a lucky guy. Is I that mean, still working, Connor? Can, it's not working. It's not working anymore. Oh. Well, apparently a fuse has been blown. I hope they don't blame us for it. <laughs> and, of course, whenever it's cold and there are any delays, the fans get a little testy. So, well, you, you know, the favorite part that I love about games is that, you know, you'll see all the guys who aren't playing, they will will be around the heaters the whole time in the game. You will know the guys who are playing and the guys who aren't playing. The people who are out on the field, they don't need the heater because they'll run around so much that they will naturally, you know, their body will warm up. But for the guys who are the bench warmers, they'll be right by the heater and that will be their favorite spot of the game. I knew a thing or two about bench warming, but the press box blew a fuse, and that is why the scoreboard is out. Wow. That is why our heater is out. I don't even know if we're on the air right now, but we'll just keep talking because we would anyway. Right. And one of the things I, do, I like to look at the crowd on these cold days, you see some funky looking hats. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy with a Broomfield helmet. Normally he would be the weird guy, but I bet that helmet is somewhat warm. We're going to start up the game again despite the scoreboard. First and 10 at the 20-yard line for the Coyotes. And going backwards is Sewell leading the charge, Drew Davies. Also in there was Nathan Aragon. And that was an angry defensive play that time by the Eagles. And they need to play that way. They need to play with a little ferocity tonight. Well, you know what? Even the scoreboard going out has helped out the, uh, the defense of Broomfield. You know, early jitters in the game. You're getting hit in the mouth with this rushing attack by Monarch. And so it gives uh, Brookfield a little bit of a chance just to slow down, get their bearings, and play Eagles football. And here's Sewell again, slicing through the line of scrimmage down to the 10-yard line, close to a first down. And Broomfield makes a good play, and then they give up a big play. And they will call it third down. Yeah, third and one, and that's just what Monarch likes to do. Control the clock, control the ball, start fast, and also frustrate the defense, and tire out the defense, excuse me, with the rushing attack. Running back Braden Pape is in the game, number 15, right behind quarterback Watson. Third and less than a yard, and it's Pape up the middle. Touchdown! A 10-yard jaunt straight up the gut. And the Coyotes take a six to nothing lead. Easy play for Monarch right up the middle. Great blocking, but it looks to me from here, from my vantage point, that nobody from Broomfield know who, knew who had the ball. 
And so that's why it was so wide open. Again, for Monarch, they like to start off fast. Not a surprise on their first drive to score a touchdown. Jamie Falloon will attempt the extra point. Watson will hold. Low snap, it gets through the quarterback. The holder goes down. And an alert play by Dylan Plain to tackle the holder, also the quarterback, Cole Watson. So that was a muffed extra point there, and that could loom large as this game moves along. So a break for Broomfield, but an 80-yard drive for the Coyotes sending a message to the Eagles. Er Early on, this is exactly what you want to do if you're Marnock. You beat Broomfield two times last year, and you want to let them know on Broomfield's turf that, you know what, this is our house and we're going to be here all day. And that's exactly what Marnock has done on the first drive, just hit Broomfield in the mouth. It's going to be very interesting to see how Broomfield responds. Falloon will kick it off. The deep man for the Eagles is Connor G. Also, Gian Panicucci. What do you think about the blue pants for uh, Broomfield? How do you like those uniforms? I'm not a big monochromatic guy when it comes to football uniforms unless it's all white. Okay. So I would like to see maybe the silver pants that Broomfield has. All right. I'm not saying they're ugly uniforms, mm -hmm. but I think they could be better. But who am I? Yeah. So, so you just say I'm no fashion consultant. <laughs> well, you're just saying you're bland in, in the fashion sense. I love it. I love it. Really? I do. I think it's a great look for Broomfield. Let's see if uh, if the great look will show uh, on the field today. Saloon boots it away. And it will be G at the one. Cuts it up the sideline. G, one man to beat, and he gets bumped out of bounds. Oh, he actually stayed inbounds and picked up a few more yards. A 59-yard return by Connor G. And the, uh-oh, there's a flag on the play oh, back no. at the 24-yard line. And they're going to bring it back. And let's take another look as we have our monitor back. All right, good job, everyone in the truck. Well, first of all, it's glad to be back. Second of all, what a great return to start off for Connor G. And you know what? You can see the block in the back there. But again, he hits the alley wide open, has to make one move, you know, stiff arms the kicker. Looks like he stepped out of bounds but didn't and was spun down around the 40-yard line. But unfortunately, it's going to come back. And in a rivalry game like this, uh, it's plays like that, penalties like that, that will hurt you. Angelo Perez is the quarterback. Ryan McCulley is the tailback. Two wideouts left. Person motion. Flag flies, and we may have a procedure call on Broomfield. Yeah, it's going to be on, it's one of the linemen. And the starting offense for Broomfield. Perez the quarterback, McCulley the tailback. The wideouts. Gian Panacucci, Dylan Plain, Michael Riston, and Dan Purse. Up front, the center is Nick Birdsall. The guards, Jacob Blunt on the left, Michael Horner on the right. And it was on Broomfield. And the tackles, Drew Davies and Austin Harris. Harris the right tackle, Davies on the left side. And coming in with the play is Nate Ferguson. And he'll be split to one of the outside parts. They're going to have three wide receivers right. Purse split to the near side. McCulley is the lone running back. First and 15. Perez fires one complete at the 16-yard line. Ferguson the reception, and that gets the penalty yardage back, plus one. It'll be second down and nine for Broomfield. Actually, they gave him a pretty good spot. Call it second down and eight, a seven-yard pickup. Love the call early on for Broomfield. Just an easy uh, pitch and catch to your tight end. Just to get your quarterback started, get Perez's arm going, a safe throw to start the game. Perez outlet to Purse. Purse gets dragged down. Kyle Billingsley on the tackle. And positive yardage, so it'll bring up third down. 
And we'll see where they spot the ball. It's tough to see the near sideline because of all the Broomfield players standing. Yeah, it's a first down, Bill. And it is a first. Good job there, Justin, with the eyesight. Well, you know, I have eagle eyes. Tonight, there's a lot of eagle eyes. There it is. What song did eagle eyes? Oh, goodness. No, that was Lion Eyes by the Eagle. I <laughs> <That> was close. <laughs> First and ten. We're Broomfield. both off a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Pitch to McCulley. His first carry. He gets taken down hard. Ball is loose. The initial contact, Connor Fitzgerald. Broomfield got it back, fortunately for them. But big number 94, Fitzgerald, really laid a lick on McCulley. And you can see the snow in the background. It is Friday night, of course, but yesterday and this morning we had snow and a good job to clear the snow from the field. And you can see that we are in Colorado, even though it's October, late October, you never know when you're going to get snow. Well, this is Colorado to a T. How about this? On Monday, it's going to be 70 degrees is the high. Wow. Crazy state we live in, but a beautiful one. Perez pumps. Throws incomplete, intended for Connor G. And that could have been a hit on a defenseless receiver Ooh. there. It looked like the ball was well overthrown. And G got leveled. And Justin, would you have thrown a flag on this? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the replay again. Angelo Perez on the fake of the give. And right now he wants to throw the ball to uh, actually Perez. Then he throws it to G late. And you know what? I mean, it's football. It's not a late hit. It just, it looks worse live than it really was. That was Bruce Oliver, safety. I might have thrown a flag on that one. Well, he, he did. Clearly, the ball was not catchable. It, it, it wasn't a spear. If it was a spear, it is deserving of a penalty. Third down, and a little more than 10. To give to McCulley. McCulley's got some room. First down and more. McCulley toward midfield into Coyotes territory at the 46 yard line. First down Broomfield, a 29 yard run. What a call by Coach Davies on third and 11 to do a quarterback, to do a, uh, just a run to the outside as we look at the replay. We can easily see what happens with McCulley. First of all, look at the line. Look at the way that they block it. Look at the, look at the seal on the outside by number 42, Nate Ferguson. But again, you can see McCulley. His eyes going downfield, the vision, breaking off tackles, running down the field. Nobody's going to stop this big man for the big game. First and 10 Eagles at the 46-yard line of the Coyotes. Passes deflected and intercepted. Not sure who picked it off. But the ball was tipped and a big play for the Coyotes. And that's a backbreaker because Broomfield was marching. And it was Jeff Clary, defensive back, on the interception, so Cole Watson brings his offense back out with a 6-0 lead. Very important drive here for Broomfield's defense to come off of a turnover. You have to get a stop here. And here's the give to Marks, and he gets out toward the 35-yard line. He'll spot it at the 34. And it'll bring up a second down and five. Again, Bill, that's the risk that you have when you're a passing offense. They're running a passing offense, Broomfield. But any time that the ball gets tipped, especially when it's cold, the ball gets harder. So it's harder to catch. That's why uh, you have the ball tipped there a little bit high. Falls into the hands of uh, Monarch. And the give up the middle and getting first down yardage was Braden Pape, the man who scored the touchdown. So they move the chains. And that is the fifth first down of the night for Monarch. They look a little bit like the Missouri Tigers. <laughs> I see that big M on their helmet. Yeah, but their offense is nothing like the Missouri Tigers. You have, you have the wing T here. Looks like a triple I formation. Quick pitch. And Marks stumbles forward, gets about three yards, bring up a second down and seven. The scoreboard is out, so we do not have time remaining in the first quarter. But it is Monarch six, Broomfield nothing, a 10 yard run. Uh, earlier on their first possession. And that run was by Braden Pape. 
They pack it in, and here's Marks again. He gets out to the 50-yard line, tackled by Dylan Plain, but good enough for a first down. And early on, he is chewing up yardage, 75 yards on just eight carries. It just feels like Marks can get whatever he wants. Again, on the quick pitch to the outside of the tackle. This time he takes it a little bit on the inside of the tackle, and there's nobody there. He doesn't get touched until the second level. First and 10, Monarch on the Broomfield 49-yard line. Fumble! Ball is loose. And it looks like it will be Monarch's ball. I think it was a fumble. Yes, yeah. that was the designed quarterback keeper. It, it was a designed blessing for Broomfield because they need that just to stop the bleeding. Monarch looks like they could get whatever they want on the ground on offense. There's a heater. Don't get too close, kids. Don't want to spontaneously combust. <laughs> Second down and nine. Interesting formation here, Bill. Marks on the little end around. Breaks a tackle, but not the next one. He gets lambasted by Tyler Stemke at the 45-yard line of Broomfield. A gain of four. And that'll bring a gain of three, make it. That'll bring up a third down and six. Again, as you see, just great uh, hard tackle here <laughs> by Stimke. He had 10 tackles last week against Montbello. Um, also had 57 tackles on the season, so very important for him to, uh, to really stand firm today for Broomfield's defense. Marks drives forward. He'll be short of a first down at the 40, gain of five. They'll bring up a fourth and one. And having to come out of the game after losing his helmet, Nathan Aragon, replaced by DJ Zissimos. So they'll go for it, I'm sure. Head coach Phil Bravo does not send his punting unit out. Fourth and one, ball just outside the Broomfield 40-yard line. Bill, I'm just gonna take a guess here. I think it's going to be a run but you can't take it for granted. They have thrown five touchdown passes. This would be a perfect time to do it. Marks has the first, I believe he had the first down, and he got knocked backwards. Good heavens. Oh my goodness. We call that a hospital hit because when you get hit like that, you're gonna find yourself in a hospital. My goodness, what a shot. They're gonna have to measure, no. Broomfield holds, good heavens, what a hit. Great. Looks like Stemke again. Great, great stand by Broomfield. Let's take a look at the replay. Again, a, a quick pitch outside. This is what's been killing uh, Broomfield so far early in the game. Running back gets to the outside and then gets met. My God. Wow. You're having <laughs> by a couple of guys there. Sounds like you're having some bad flashbacks there, oh, Justin. Oh, you know, it's Maybe never a Texas Longhorn planting <laughs> you in the turf or... <laughs> Anyway, big stand by Broomfield. Great. They have the momentum back, so the turnover doesn't hurt him too much. Great tackle by DJ Zissimos there. Three players to the right. Perez downfield, complete for a first down. Pass was caught by Panacucci, the senior. Or was it Connor G? No, it was caught by G and Panacucci. Okay. And if we've seen anything early on from the offense of Broomfield, they want to spread the ball. They want to pass this ball and not run it. You and I, Justin, are not big fans of the numbers of Broomfield because it's hard to tell an eight from a six and a nine from a, a six. And G Gary Davies said the same thing. He said he hates his numbers because on film, he can't tell which kid is which kid. He's also not a fan of the blue pants. Get some new <laughs> uniforms next year, Broomfield. So far, Perez, three for five through the air, 28 yards, and a timeout taken by Broomfield. So, let's catch our breath. Pretty good start <laughs> for, for uh, Monarch, but I think Broomfield may have gotten their uh, sea legs after that last stop. Well, just when you thought this game would be a blowout, I mean, Monarch, they start off the game early. Their last three games, Bill, uh, the, the last game against George Washington, 36 points in the first quarter. It looked like more of the same, but then the defense of Broomfield made a huge stop. Again, DJ Zissimos with a great hit. One of the best hits we have seen all season long. 
uh, to stop uh, the running back from Monarch, uh, to stop Ethan Marks. And Marks, so far, was just having his way with the Broomfield defense. Again, he has, what, 75 yards rushing already in the first quarter alone? Well, they needed one more yard to get a first down, and he didn't get it. So now Broomfield, first and 10 at the Monarch 49-yard line. First quarter, not sure how much score time is left. The scoreboard is out as a fuse was blown. A three-yard pickup for Broomfield. That was Nate Ferguson on the carry. Second down and seven for the Eagles. It almost seems to me, Bill, that Broomfield is just running to actually set up the pass. They want to throw the ball, and they see, I guess, something in film against Monarch that they have the advantage. Their wide receivers have uh, the, uh, definitely a height advantage against the Monarch defenders. So that's something that Broomfield offense that they want to exploit today. Perez with time. Downfield incomplete. Pass was intended for Michael Riston. That'll bring up a third down and seven. Definitely, and as we look at the replay, look at the way that Angelo Perez holds the ball just that extra second just to give Riston a chance, almost intercepted. And I think the hand uh, that got it to the view of Riston stopped him from catching the ball. Riston normally makes that play, though. Very sure-handed receiver. Just looked to me that he didn't see the ball until the last moment. Third and seven. Last time Broomfield had a third and long, they ran it with McCulley and picked up a first down on a 28-yard gain. Fake to McCulley. Perez downfield, complete. First down, Broomfield. On the reception was Connor G. Brought down by Bruce Oliver. And another first down for the Eagles. Angelo Perez, you can't say enough about where he has pinpointed this pass. Great accuracy. He's showing why he's one of the better quarterbacks in, in the state of Colorado, just the way that he hit Connor G on the drag route for the first down. Also, a lot of a lot of what happens um, at the high school level is a lot of the wide receivers will catch the ball behind the line or behind the first down marker. Connor G made sure that he got in front of the uh, first down marker before he caught the pass. Here's McCulley dancing to the outside, picks up good yardage as he turns it upfield, gets inside the 30 to the 28 of Monarch. And a whistle on the field, and I think that's the end of the first quarter. It is our score. Monarch six, Broomfield nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter action after this. First play of the second quarter and a long pass incomplete. Perez was trying to hit G on a post pattern and that'll bring up a third down and three. Perez has been on target so far tonight. And it looks like we're gonna have a quarterback change. Connor Eeks is come in at the quarterback position. I didn't see an injury of any type to Perez, but Eeks, who can run it, and he does run it. And he gets close to a first down. Wearing number 15, comes in in a Tebow roll. <laughs> and we'll see where they spot the football. Yeah, they'll bring out the chain, so uh, very close. All right, Bill, let's see how good your vision is. I'm gonna say they're short by about two feet. Okay. And it looks like so does the, uh, the uh, referee. And they're not even going to measure. <laughs> but Broomfield will go for it. Eeks remains at quarterback. Same play. Why, ch why change it? Why change it? Do the same play. Run up the middle. This is a time where your big uglies need to step up. You know, step up to the plate. Get a drive on the line. Come on, big man. Eeks gets hog tied and brought down 
and it looks like he is short. So gambling was Broomfield, and it doesn't pay off, apparently. They're going to have a measurement, officials time out for a measurement. Yeah, this Again, the scoreboard clock is not working, so we don't know how much time is left, but it's very early second quarter. The senior Hart Collins with a great tackle on number 15, Connor Eeks. To me, I don't think he, he has the first down. No, I think he's well short. Well, a little short. So Monarch holds, and the Coyote fans howling on the other side of the stadium. And so Broomfield's defense now has to shake off the disappointment of the offense failing on fourth down. They've got to try to get the ball back as soon as they can. Well, a little bit of a questionable call for me because Carter Eek, 6'2", 205. A guy like that, why go off tackle? Why not go right up the middle, right behind the butt of the center? Either way, what a great stop by Monarch as they have a fourth down stop. Cole Watson on a broken play gets about three yards out of it. He turned to hand the ball off and nobody was there. And offensive lineman Austin Beswick pats his quarterback on the head saying, way to get something out of nothing there. Well, it just shows the drive that Monarch is getting off the line on Broomfield's defense that even on a broken play, the quarterback could still get three yards. Second down and seven for the Coyotes. Ball at their own 29-yard line. The deep man in the triple-I formation is Marks. He gets the pitch, and he gets out to the 34-yard line, which will bring up a very manageable third and two, maybe three. Okay. So Marks has been the workhorse for the Coyotes. Again, Ethan Marks on the pitch quick pitch to the outside. And that's what uh, Marlock likes to do. They like to give a quick pitch and they use the quarterback as another blocker. So again, it's 11 on 11. Usually it's 11 on 10. Again, this game is for the top spot in the Mountain Conference. And Marks has a first down. Good blocking. Connor Fitzgerald along that line opened up a big hole. And they move the chains again. Also, Hurst Josh, another big man on the line with great blocking. It just looks like Monarch is blowing away the defensive line of Broomfield. And this is where it's shown how Broomfield misses a big guy like Andrew McLean. It looks like Pape up the middle for minimal gain. Again, second down, and it looks to be seven yards. And, Bill, that's all Monarch wants to do. If they're not going to get the big play, what they will do is chew up the clock, frustrate your defense, and they just progress slowly. They're on schedule. Second and seven, they're on schedule. It could be third and four. They're still on schedule. Marks again. Runs into a wall of tacklers. There's some heavy hitting going on there. Stemke, anytime you hear a big hit, or see a big hit, you can just picture 51 peeling himself off the ground. So no gain, maybe a yard. Monarch has seven first downs in this first half. Again, it is very cold here. Game time <laughs> temperature 22 degrees, but fortunately no wind. Third and seven. Looks like they were trying to get Broomfield to jump. The defensive front, very disciplined for the Eagles. Now audible being called by Cole Watson. And here's a give that's short. That was to Sewell. So Kid Sewell gets it to the 46-yard line of the Coyotes, and it brings up a fourth down, and the punting unit comes out. Whoa, that's a shock to me. What? Fourth and a long two. I would punt the ball away as well. The punter is Jeff Clary, and G and Plain deep for Broomfield. Eagles have to be wary of a fake. High snap, but Clary able to haul it in and get a decent kickoff. Plain has it at the 22, to the 30. 
breaking tackles left and right, stays on his feet to the 33-yard line. Broke about four tackles, a determined run, and we have a penalty marker on the play. Could marker is at the 46-yard line. Yes, and it could be the second return that will be called back. Second big return, excuse me, that could be called back for Broomfield. See if we can spot this infraction. Well, again, look at the wonderful camera angle that we have here. Again, as we have number 10, Dylan Plain. And look, he's just breaking tackle after tackle after tackle. This guy just won't go down. Yeah, he will. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan playing a senior. But that's frustrating because he did break several tackles, got good yardage, they had the ball across the 30 yard line, decent position to start, and now they're gonna be hemmed in inside their 10 yard line. I'm not sure what the call was, but obviously some type of blocking call. Let's go boys, control what we can yeah, do. So it'll be first and 10 for Broomfield. Yeah. We'll call it at the 10 yard line. And back in at quarterback is Angelo Perez. Take a look at the formation, Bill. On the far side of the field, you have two wide receivers lined up very close together. Wriston in motion. Perez gets the shotgun snap and a flag flies. And this could be the second procedure penalty that they've had and the scoreboard has come back on. Oh, we have life. Now, I will say this. You and I, Justin, were blamed for causing the power outage with the fuse blowing. Yes. Because we brought a space heater into the booth. Now, if they had heat in this press box, we wouldn't have to do that in the first place. We did but well. we are getting blamed, and I am not going to take the blame for this. Bill, I believe uh, you say the famous words, not my fault. Not my fault. <laughs> Until they have uh, Thomas Edison with proof that we caused the power outage, then I'm not going to take responsibility. I don't believe it. I mean, it, it's not our fault. Not at all. That was the fourth penalty for the Eagles. 29 yards. Monarch is yet to be penalized. So they'll start first and 10 at the five-yard line with 10.48 on the clock. They're going to say 7.26 now yes. in the second quarter. That makes more sense. Very important drive for Broomfield here, but they have to stop the self-inflicted wounds. That will hurt this offense, especially as they're uh, close to their own goal line. And this is a place you don't want to make a mistake. Perez, downfield, he's got a man complete for first down. Oh, what a catch! Unbelievable. Nate Great Ferguson catch. just finding a seam. Perez put it on the money and I tell you what, he took a pop, Ferguson. Look at the senior. First of all, just look at the way that Perez, again, throws the ball right on the money. And again, it looks like he has it. Then he gets oh. popped. Ball bobbles around, still holds on after the hard hit. What a great play by Nate Ferguson. That's concentration. See that street lamp? I saw the view, and I thought that was the moon for a second. <laughs> it's only a street lamp. They could use more lighting down there, by the way. They need more power at this stadium, we found out. Here's Perez, launching it deep. Ball is incomplete, intended for Purse. On the coverage was Kyle Billingsley, and it will bring up a second down and 10 as everybody grabs their breath. Well, Dan Purse is one of the impact players that we have highlighted early on in this game. And in a type of rivalry matchup like this, with the conference title on the line, you have to come up with big plays like that. Again, a great throw by Angelo Perez, but that's just one that, you know, if you lay out, you may get it. Again, that's something he'll look at during film, se film session. Perez is throwing the ball very well tonight. Perez, keeper up the middle. And he muscles his way out to the 33 yard line and it will bring up a third down and five. If we have a replay, I want to show one thing as we show number 57, that big man right there. He came into this game sick, we, and, we, and we don't have the replay, but on the end of that play, the tail end, he had a pancake. That's the type of things you like to see. I love to see a big man up on the line getting dirty, getting nasty. Perez, five of 10, 65 yards. Third and five. Low snap, 
Perez scoops, fires, incomplete, intended for Connor G. And the man on the coverage was Bruce Oliver again. He's been all over the field early on for the Coyotes. Well, first of all, what an athletic play just for Perez to get the ball after a low snap. But just think if the snap was perfect, you had man-on-man -man coverage. Connor G beat his man on the corner route, and he had nothing but green grass ahead of him if the ball could have got there. A big play miss there for Broomfield. Spencer Reeve will do the punting. It's a low snap. He feels it like a shortstop. It's partially blocked and goes out of bounds, scattering the cheerleaders. And I think getting a hand on it was Jeff Clary, or it could have been Harrison Leachman. But a low snap gave the defense a little more time to get in there and block it. You can't blame Reeb. He did a good job to scoop it. And so, excellent field position. And because the ball went past the line of scrimmage, they'll count it as a punt of four. Five yards? Four or five yards. It was at the 33, I believe. So it's spotted, so 10 yards, spotted at the 43. And Bill, if there's a story so far in this game, it's the running offensive of Monarch and also the mistakes from Broomfield. Marks, low to the ground, plunges forward, gets to the 35 yard line. He was tripped up initially and still was able to get five yards after the initial contact. It's always a good sign of a running back when you get hit and still get some yardage out of it. Well, second down and three. The bet, yeah, the other great thing about a, a running back and a sign of a real good running back is that every time you hit, you fall forward. The only time that uh, Ethan Marks didn't fall forward was on that fourth and one when he got popped. Straight up the middle is Pape. He has a first down. He's also had a very good night. You have Marks with 99 yards on the evening. And Pape with 29 yards on just four carries. Pape also has the 10 yard touchdown that has given us the score six to nothing. Again, it looks like Marnark's offensive line, their big uglies can do whatever they want against this Broomfield defense. Marks gets hit and still gets some yards. Purse made the initial contact but it's a gain of four yards, and now Ethan Marks with 103 yards on the night, and yeah. we're still in the first half. And that's just how this Barnard offense goes. I mean, it just keeps on rolling. Dan Purse hits Marks in, in the backfield, and again, he still falls forward for six yards. Triple I yards, formation. Marks, the pitch. Peels to the outside, cuts it in, and he's got a first down. So chewing up big chunks of yardage, Dylan Plain made the tackle for the Eagles. Yeah, and as we take a look at this replay, take a look at the quarterback. He immediately does a quick pitch, and then he goes to, uh, to block again. But though, Ethan Marks bounces the ball to the outside, breaking a couple of tackles, takes a hard hit, but falls forward for the first down. And we have a timeout on the field. Water out. Water out. Monarch will take the timeout. And that is their first. They have two left. Broomfield also with two remaining timeouts. Bill Rogan along with Justin Adams. And our stat guy is Connor Shreve. We thank you for tuning in to tonight's game. On a frigid night in Broomfield, Colorado, the score is Monarch 6 and the Broomfield Eagles nothing. Yeah, so while we have a, a second, um, a pause in the game. Just want to let you know that the schools taking part in today's event are part of a 340 member schools of the Colorado High School Activities Association. As members, we promote and protect the privilege of participation in interscholastic activities. We also promote lifetime values like respect, teamwork, citizenship, and citizenship, competition, hard work, and sporting behavior. We help reach and motivate students. We develop policies as a group and as a responsibility of membership. We are coaches, administrators, and game officials working for the common good of the kids. We are Chassis. First and 10 run by Marks. And they're going on that right side. They're picking on the left side of the defense. Moving to the right. That was a gain of one. Be second down at nine. 
Ball is at the 12 yard line of Broomfield. Again, the triple I formation. And the pitch to Marks, he finds some room, gets near the goal line before he is stopped. On the tackle was Luke McEninch. And could be a first down, close to it. It is. So first and goal to go for Monarch. And they'll spot the ball at the three yard line. Great run by Ethan Marks as he just tiptoes his way outside of a tackle from Dan Purse in the backfield. Marks again, touchdown. <laughs> Flips the ball to the official and it's 12-0 Monarch. They missed an extra point last time. Do you chase that point now or do you go for the extra point? Go for the extra point. You have no reason to chase any points now. You have a dominant run, rushing attack. You're running the ball wherever you want. There's no reason to. Again, on a quick pitch to Ethan Marks. Well, they're running the ball well. they so are, well, excuse me. <laughs> they will go for two. Sewell is the back who gets the pitch, lowers his shoulders, and it all depends on the spot. Did he know. cross the plane of the goal line? He did. Two-point conversion, good for Monarch as Kid Sewell takes it in, and it's 14 to nothing. So that missed extra point, not a problem anymore for Monarch. It's a thing of the past, and as we look back at this touchdown of Ethan Marks, look at the push of the offensive line. Again, what great running by Ethan Marks. He just went into the end zone untouched, the big uglies up front. And look, Monarch's running on the left side, they're running on the right side. It's quick pitch city. Whichever way that they want to run the ball, they could run it. And again, we'll look at the uh, two-point conversion. A lot of the same. Another quick pitch, this time to number 34, Kig Sewell, who just gets the ball over the goal line. Now it's 14-0 Monarch. All you need is the nose of the football. That, that's all you need. Cross the imaginary line. This is a huge 339 for Broomfield. Don't forget, they'll get the ball to start off the second half. So with a score here, a field goal, a touchdown, as it looks like Monarch's gonna have a very uh, interesting kick here. Are they gonna try maybe, an onside kick? Maybe even a pooch kick. Jamie Falloon does pooch it in the air. Fair catch called for at the 20, or at the 40 yard line by McEninch. That was a smart play by McEninch because he knew as soon as he caught the ball, if he did not fair catch it, he would get drilled. Good field position. And offside on Monarch, but I'm sure Broomfield will decline that penalty and take the ball at their own 41-yard line. You know, I don't like to really question the coaches a lot, but you have to think there, what is Phil Bravo thinking? Maybe he is trying to, you know, get the blowout with an uh, onside kick, but you now have given Broomfield a team that's struggling on offense, you know, hurting themselves with penalties. You're giving them the ball on the 41-yard line with 3.39 left to go in the first half and two timeouts. I don't know why you wouldn't kick it deep. They did have a good return on a kickoff, Broomfield, although it was brought back by a penalty. Maybe that figured into Phil Bravo's thinking. But to me, kick it deep and let your coverage unit work. Now you give Broomfield a good field position. Torres the quarterback, McCulley is the tailback. Two men split to the left, two to the right. It's a dead ball foul, the offside. So they're gonna make them kick it again from the 35 yard line. So that's not a good break for Broomfield. Yeah, I wonder if Coach Bravo is gonna kick the ball deep this time. He should. Didn't well, you, work last time. And you don't want to give the uh, Broomfield great field position again. I want to I wanted see if uh, Coach Davies is going to scoot up a couple of his guys, especially with, with that last pooch kick. Well, G is deep for the Eagles, standing at his goal line. You also have Penacucci on the far side. He's deep at the 10-yard line. And again, Jamie Falloon. The senior kicker, see what he does here. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna pooch it again, Bill. Not taking much of a run up. Will it be an onside kick or pooch? Same place. Same place and it's fielded by McEninch at the 40 yard line and he gets taken down. 
So basically same field position. I don't understand that. And I'd like to ask Coach Bravo, but he doesn't return phone calls or emails. <laughs> Did not have a lot of cooperation from Monarch this week in preparing for the game. I we think wish we had more information on the Coyotes. Maybe we, maybe we should have just wrote him a letter or something. Maybe that would have worked. There are ways to make people talk. We didn't use all of them, apparently. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. So the penalty only cost him one yard, Broomfield. <laughs> penalty on Monarch, that was. Pass was complete to Panacucci. He gets bumped out of bounds by Jake Hummel. And it's a nice pickup on first down. Gain of eight. Second down and two. Clock is stopped with 3.30 to go in the second quarter. Love the play call, Bill. You have Monarch's defensive backs playing off. They're afraid of getting beat deep. You do a quick hook route. Get the ball to Penacucci, who catches the ball with, ball with his hands. Eight-yard gain. Gets out of bounds. Stops the clock. Broomfield has two timeouts remaining. G on the carry. Has a first down into Coyote's territory at the 48-yard line. So a four-yard pickup, and Broomfield in business. First and 10 at the 48 of Monarch. Good call, giving the ball to the senior, Connor G. Just on a quick reverse, you know, a quick give to the outside. Hopefully you catch Monarch a little bit off guard. You know, on plays like that, it's very important for the tackles to hold their blocks and to get a seal on the outside for the success of the play. Panacucci and G to the near side, per split to the far side. Wristing in motion. Looks like zone defense for Monarch. Perez downfield, incomplete. Threw it into traffic intended for Gian Panacucci. It'll bring up second down and 10. You know, is there not a guy that we have seen this year who believes in his arm more than Angelo Perez? From here, it looked like he had no window to throw the ball there to Panacucci. And he threw the ball where the only person who could catch the ball was Panacucci. You know, passes like that will be completed as the game progresses. Second and 10. Watch the blitz here, Bill, for Monarch. It's a bad snap. And going down is Perez. He fielded the ball on a hop, but then he lost his footing on the artificial turf surface. No pun intended. <laughs> Unfortunately for uh, from Broomfield, that's the second bad snap of the game. Unfortunately from number 69, Nick Birdshaw. And the ball just gets snapped over the head of Perez. And he goes to retrieve it. And as he gets the ball, looks upfield but just slips on the turf. Huge loss from um, Broomfield. And Broomfield has taken their second timeout. They have one remaining. Well, would you go, is this four down territory? Because that's no. the only reason why I no, would take no, the timeout. No, no, no. If you don't make the first down here, you punt it away. It's still a full half of football to go. But it's third and 22, ball at the Broomfield 38-yard line. And there's not too many play calls for third and 22. I have one. Throw the ball deep to uh, number 86, Dan Purse. No, I mean, seriously. That jump ball situation. Jump ball, you have a guy who is just large in his charge. 6'4", 205, runs a 4'5", 4'640". Why not get Perez in the shotgun, go back, and throw the ball deep to number 86? He's going to get, I guarantee you, Bill, he will get man-on-man -man coverage. Well, Purse is being covered by Oliver on the far side. And just, there is some safety help. <laughs> yeah, just when I say that, they go to a cover two. <laughs> Perez launches, looking for Panacucci. Goes through the hands of the defender, Clary, incomplete. And it brings up a fourth down, and Broomfield will have to punt it away as Spencer Reeve trots onto the field. I don't disagree with the call. The only thing that I would change is when you talk to Panacucci. And if you're Panacucci, you have to protect your quarterback at all times. If the ball is overthrown and it looks like it's going to be intercepted, you still have to protect your quarterback. As we look again at the last play, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Well, Great here's step. the punt. And it's blocked! And it squirts out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Getting in there with the block was Colin Hart, the senior. Huge play by the senior linebacker. 
Again, Monarch will start the ball in Broomfield territory. And last time that that happened, they drove right down the field for the score. They'll spot the ball at the Broomfield 36 yard line, 232 to go. I don't need my stat man for this. Quarterback Watson, zero for zero for zero yards. <laughs> no attempts, no completions, no yards passing. But a lot of blocks coming from uh, your yes. quarterback. Will this be a time they put it in the air? No. Here's Marks. Marks gets tackled at the 30 yard line, falls forward to the 29. Dylan Plain making the tackle. If Dylan Plain doesn't make that tackle, it's a touchdown. It's 20 to nothing if he doesn't make that tackle. But he did. Broomfield has to make a huge stop here. We're, let, we're down to about two minutes left to go in the first half. They look a little bit disorganized, Bill. Inside it goes to Pape, and the Pape Mobile gets a first down. You like that one? That's, I like it. I like that's it. pretty bad on my part. Well, you know, you're improving little by little, Bill. Actually, they're going to call it short of a first down. Third down and one. Take, uh, I'll let you be the offense coordinator here. What do you think they're going to call? They're going to right side with Marks. Okay. Quick pitch. There you go. Marks has the first down, grinding out yardage to the 20 yard line of Broomfield. So another first down. And they are close to double digits in first downs. Might have, is that their 10th one? Well, number 50, Levi in sign with the huge block there. To 11 free first downs. Up, yeah, to free up Marks on the run. Marks again. He stumbles forward. Getting a hand on him to trip him up was Aragon. But he always leans forward in that extra yardage. Second down and five, a five yard gain. The clock is at 113 and counting. Who needs timeouts when you get to the line as quick as Monarch is? Ball is at the 16 yard line. Marks in the middle and he goes down. Aragon again on the tackle along with Mackinich and Stemke. And timeout is taken by Monarch. That is their last timeout. According to my uh, calculations. So with 59 seconds to go. <laughs> Amazing numbers here from Marks. 23 carries, 145 yards and a touchdown. In the first half, 23 carries in the first half there. I do know one thing. After tonight's game, uh, Mr. Marks will not be gallivanting. He'll be sleeping very well in his bedroom. Bill, get this. He came into the game with 66 carries total on the season. Some young fans bundled up. There were Broomfield fans here two hours before the game sitting in these cold aluminum bleachers. I don't know how they do it. Well, Bill, uh, get a whole lot of covers, a whole lot of... Uh, Get a big coat and sit down and enjoy some football. Third and four. And here's the pitch to the to kid. Kid Sewell scores. Wow. 15 yard touchdown run for Kid Sewell. And Monarch opens up a 20 to nothing lead. Not to make any excuses for Broomfield, but you see how big the loss of Andrew McLean is, is hurting this team. Wide open, rushing attack up the middle. We're, we're extra point away from 21 nothing going into halftime. Jamie Palloon will try to tack on the extra point. High snap, and the kick is up and it is through. Great job by the holder, Cole Watson, who's also the quarterback. That's why he's there with those good hands and he was able to corral that high snap. And Palloon put it through. And I tell you what, the enthusiasm has certainly gone out of the Broomfield crowd right now. Well, again, let's take a look at the replay. Another quick pitch, this time to the big man, number third, number 34, Kid Sewell, who just keeps his legs moving, dives into the end zone. And I mean, he, he's not getting hit until the second level, and when I say the second level, that's the linebackers, the third level is the safeties. And the fourth level is touchdown. <laughs> and that's where Monarch has been three times today. <laughs> Here's a look at the Monarch sideline. 53 seconds to go in the first half. 21-0 Monarch. They led 6-0 after one quarter. 
And they've tacked on 15 here in the second. Bill, again, one of the keys to the game that I talked about earlier was just how Monarch likes to start off the game fast. And they have here a 21-0 lead possibly going into halftime is everything that uh, Monarch wanted. Another pooch kick. That ball's going to bounce. Trouble. It's loose, and it's recovered by Monarch. Good heavens. Coming up with the loose football was Connor Fitzgerald, who has been all over the field tonight on the offensive line, the defensive line, and now special teams. And that is inexcusable by Broomfield. They've seen that play twice. They saw it coming again. That ball's got to be caught. Broomfield's defense is on life support right now as we take a look at the replay. Again, great camera work. Another pooch kick. <coughs> Excuse me, Ed. And that's it a, just wasn't recovered. That's a bad play by the special teams of Broomfield. Ball at the 40-yard line, 51 yeah. seconds left. Will we see a pass finally from Monarch? No. In the middle to Pape. He gets about three yards. Don't forget, Monarch has no timeout, so the only way they could stop the clock is by getting the first down. That's only temporary until they set the ball. I'm surprised here you're not throwing. Well, again, two safeties deep for Broomfield. They are anticipating a pass. And here we go. Here's the pass. Watson. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Marks. So that's bring up third down and seven. Yeah, the 19th pass of the season for Monarch. They have, coming into tonight's game, just 18 pass attempts, but five for touchdowns. Well, Coach Davies told us earlier in the game that he has two safeties that aren't worried about the, run, the rushing attack. They're just playing back for the pass, just in case that happens. So you have nine in the box for Broomfield. Here's the pitch to the tailback. That's Sewell, and he gets tripped up and 17 seconds on the clock as he goes out of bounds again another quick pitch to Sewell actually first down yeah first down but look it's the quarterback who's leading uh the blocks there as Sewell goes out for a first down they start the clock again and we have a penalty on the play as the ball was spiked by Watson a legal procedure on the offense is what we'll see here Bill you had one of the running backs moving early before the ball was snapped. It's almost hard to call Watson a quarterback. He's more like the sixth lineman. He's a fullback, Bill. We'll just call him a, a he's like Tim Tebow, a fullback. But now. he's had <laughs> plenty of or plenty of success passing the ball this year. Not many pass attempts. It, you know, he's got to say to the coach, hey, coach, let's air it out tonight. Well, no. Nope. <laughs> well, they're a uh, wave off the penalty. I always wonder, you know, why throw the flag if it's not a penalty? Well, you know what it also what does? You well, you know what it also does? It stops the clock. We'll see. Well, they spiked it yeah. anyway. No, 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 but it stops the clock, Bill. Well, now, will they, yeah, they, now they will go to a second down. Okay, so they will count the down. Sewell again, bouncing off tacklers. Sewell to the 22-yard line. Ball is loose, and it's out of bounds. What's this, the call here? Blue ball, let's go. Blue ball is what I heard. Go. And it's so Broomfield's ball. A turnover. Again, let's look at the run as Josh Sewell goes on the outside and he's breaking tackles. Again, keeps his feet moving, but he gets hit and the ball comes out as you've seen right there, recovered by, looks to be number 50, is that 51? Not sure who it was. Again, it's tough to read the numbers. Tyler Stimke with the recovery. Well, well, with seven seconds left, not much for Broomfield to do, but at least there won't be a field goal attempt for Monarch. So at least they won't score any more points as far as the Eagles are concerned. It looks like they might air this one out. Wouldn't be shocked if they do. I would. McCulley gets out to the 35 before he is tackled by Jacob Stockbrand, and that is it for the no, first down, so one second left. They'll be able to get one play off if they hurry. Uh, it doesn't look like they're in any bit of a hurry. No, nope, that'll be it. So the first half comes to a close. Our score, 
Monarch 21, Broomfield nothing. Broomfield a seven game winning streak on the line. Monarchs won six in a row looking for seven. We'll be back with the halftime stats in the third quarter after this. The schools taking part in today's event are part of the 340 member schools of the Colorado High School Activities Association. As members, we promote and protect the privilege of participation in interscholastic activities. We also promote lifetime values like respect, hard work, teamwork, and sporting behavior. We help reach and motivate students. We develop policies as a group as a responsibility of membership. We are coaches, game officials, and administrators working for the common good of kids. We are CHASA. Scoring Monarch a 10 yard run, and that was by Braden Pape to make it 6 0. The extra point was missed. Then a three yard run by Ethan Marks. A two point conversion was good to make it 14 0 in the second quarter. And then a 15 yard run by Sewell, and that capped a 36 yard drive. Extra point good 21 0. And there are the stats zero yards passing. Monarch does not throw the football. But they do run it, and they run it well. 234 yards in the first half. They had just one penalty for five yards, and that late turnover with seven seconds left really didn't cost them because time was so short. Broomfield, 72 yards passing. But, Justin, we talked about they needed to also run the ball, and they have not been effective in that category. Other than the long run early in the first quarter, they haven't done anything else. McCulley had an 11-yard run. Actually, it was, more, it was a 20-yard run, excuse me early in the first quarter. After that, they haven't had much. Uh, Perez has thrown the ball well, just hasn't had the big play that Broomfield was looking for. And you saw four penalties for 29 yards for Broomfield. Doesn't sound bad on the surface, but three of those penalties wiped out big plays. Yeah, you have two penalties that wiped out two long returns. Then you also have another penalty that pinned Broomfield deep in their own territory. So anytime you have that and then you have another penalty that's a drive stopper, those hurt you, especially on a, a big rivalry game like this. And it's tough to say the next possession is a must score for Broomfield, but it almost is because the running attack of Monarch, that can chew up a lot of clock. And you don't have many possessions in the second half for Broomfield, so they're going to need to do something early. And we are set to go, as you see the Monarch Coyotes in the road white uniforms with the black helmet and the gold M on the side. Kicking off will be Jamie Falloon, and you have to watch that pooch kick. They were successful in getting one in that second quarter. Well, this time he looks like he, he's dropping back to regular distance, so he'll kick the ball deep. So it looks like something that uh, Coach Bravo dialed up for the last two kicks to be pooch kicks, and he got one. G is deep. Along with Panacucci, G takes it in the end zone, so it'll be a touchback. I'll tell you, that Falloon kid's got quite a leg. That was about 68 yards in the air. Okay, Bill, here's today's trivia question. The first time for us, Broomfield High School beat Air Force Academy 12-4 last year to capture the 4A baseball state title. Name the four players from that team that are on the that are current, that are our current members of the football team right now. Okay, uh, Gian Panacucci. Okay. Is that one of them? That is one. Uh, Luke McEninch? No. Ah, all right. Well, we'll, we'll, answer, we'll answer the question after this play. All right. Here's Perez, gives the ball to McCulley. McCulley gets five yards. Or he's taken down. On the tackle for the Coyotes was Colin Hart. Okay, so here's the answer to the question. Right, let me think of, let all me right, just look at the roster. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, you're looking at the roster. Now, we do have the answer up there. I'm going to cover the answer. I'm covering the answer. You can't see it. Uh, Ryan McCulley's one of them. Okay. All right, I don't know the rest. All right, here's the rest of them. Ryan McCulley, you have one. Gian Panacucci, Pat Lalanche, and Angelo Perez. Uh, okay, that's in, a good question. In parentheses, I have their, uh, their baseball numbers. Well, I got the play. Flag on the play. Legal procedure on Broomfield. So that five-yard gain by McCulley 
and gets wiped out by their fifth penalty for 34 yards. Our referee is Kirk Russell. The umpire is Dale Efer. The head linesman is Sean Crockett, or Steve Crockett. The side judge is Scott Lewis, and the back judge is Rob Bellows, or Bowers. They have the lights out in the press box because they don't want to blow any more fuses. Quite frankly, I can't see anything anymore in here other than our monitor. <laughs> <laughs> and yet they still blame us. Your space heater blew out the press box. Oh, that's just a lame excuse. <laughs> I tell you what, though, what's not a it's not funny matter at all is the penalties that's hurting Broomfield. Here's McCulley, and he gets drilled. Good heavens, another solid hit by Colin Hart, senior linebacker. And McCulley's going to jog off. Third down and seven. Again, we saw in this drive penalty hurting Broomfield. Instead of a second and five, it turned into a second and ten. And now a third and seven. The worst thing that penalties do is they take you off schedule. Second and five, you're on schedule. You're able to do a run pass option. You maybe will be able to pass. Even if you don't get any yards, it's an easier conversion for the first down. Two yards is a lot, especially in a game like this. Three wide receivers left. And a flag flies from the back judge. Delay of game. Delay of game on Broomfield. Wow. They are just killing themselves. So it'll bring up a third and 12. Third and seven is manageable. Third and 12, a lot difficult. Again, difficult. A, yeah, another penalty hurting Broomfield as we get a chance to look at the feds. Toughing it out on a cold night. Wind 20 degrees with yeah, the wind chill. Wind chill of 20 degrees outside. If you didn't have the wind, it would be a very nice and balmy 28. <laughs> this is weather for penguins, polar bears. Perez fires deep, passes intercepted by Jeff Clary, intended for Panacucci, and Monarch has the ball inside the 40-yard line. They'll spot it at the Broomfield 36. Let's take a look at the replay, and it looks to be great, uh, pretty good pass protection as the ball is thrown. It wasn't tipped, but again, you have a great interception as number 16, Jeff Clary, the senior defensive back with the interception. And it goes back to something that I talked about in the first half, that you have to protect your, your quarterback. Penacucci could have knocked down the ball there. And Ethan Marks gets tripped up in a nice defensive surge by Kyle Holbrook. Second interception tonight thrown by Angelo Perez. That's his fifth interception of the year. Second down and 10, Coyotes at the Eagles 36 yard line. Bill, that, I will attribute that interception to the delay of game penalty. It makes a easy, well, I won't say easy, but a manageable third and seven back to a long third and 12, and you have to throw the ball deep. You're forced to on offense. Is Sewell around the left side, turns the corner, and he's close to a first down. I think he has it. And Sewell has had a very good night. Maybe in the shadows a little bit because of the running of Ethan Marks. But Sewell on the evening, nine carries, 60 yards, and a touchdown. Wow. Again, just a simple sweep to the outside, and he outruns everybody. Kid Sewell, great speed from that young man. He gets the ball now. And he gets about a yard, maybe two, before he's finally tackled. On the stop was Cooper Gardner. Bill, it's still a three possession game, but the competitiveness of this football uh, matchup here can be taken out if Monarch gets a touchdown here. It'll be very difficult for Broomfield to, uh, to get back in this game. If the team ever needed a turnover, it would be oh, Broomfield yeah, right now's now. now's the time. Marks dances through traffic inside the 20-yard line. He'll be short of a first down by about three, maybe four yards. They'll bring up a third and four. 
Ball at inside the Broomfield 19 yard line. It's a rarity to hear any running back from Marnar either stopped on the line or stopped in the backfield. Every play, three yards, four yards, five yards. Then you get a long pop, 10 yards, 15 yards. It's what Monarch loves to do. Right there, exhibit A. Straight ahead for the first down is Marks. Inside the Broomfield 15 yard line. And if they punch one in here, it would be very demoralizing for the Eagles. Time's ticking off the clock, 7.45 left to go in the third quarter. Clock's not your friend if you're Broomfield. You need a huge stop. Well, you need more than a stop. You need a turnover. Pull First out all the stops. Ten. Marks again. Bounces off tacklers. Again, doesn't look like much, but it's three, four yards consistent. And what happens is you stay on schedule if you're Marnark. Second and seven makes it easy, you know, easier. Then you get another play, but third and three, third and four. You get three more yards, you have a first down. And another thing that we haven't talked about when Monarch has done, I don't think they have a penalty this whole game. They have one penalty, One penalty, one penalty, and... That was offside on the kickoff. Yeah, offside on the quarter. kickoff. They're not hurting themselves on offense. They're staying on schedule with their offense. Second and seven. Pape up the middle. He gets grabbed by a host of blue jerseys and thrown backwards. That'll bring up third down. They will give him a yard on the play. Third and six. Quick give. Ball at the 10 yard line. Yeah, quick give to, to Pape. And even though he only has a yard, I'm imagining that for Coach Phil Bravo, this is four down territory. You want to stick a knife in a team when you have him down. He wants to put the final nail in the coffin early in the third quarter. Up the middle, Mark spins, does not get the first down, gets about three. That'll bring up fourth down. No indication of the field goal unit. So it looks like Phil Bravo will let his offense try. Fourth and three. Ball at the seven yard line. Phil, it's safe to say this is the play of the game. You get the first down, it'll be hard, even though you have 18 minutes or more, you know, 18 minutes, less than 18 minutes to come back. It'll be very difficult if Broomfield doesn't get a stop here to come back. This could be Broomfield's game right now. They need a stop yeah, desperately. Try, trying to pull them off sides with uh, the fake run of a... Uh, and yeah. Broomfield holds their water, as they say, and Monarch will take a timeout. Their first two remaining with 5.40 to go here in the third quarter. Again, both teams are 7-1, 3-0 in the Mountain Conference and riding nice winning streaks, seven in a row for Broomfield, six in a row for Monarch. The only blemish on Monarch's record this year, they lost 12 to seven to Wheat Ridge in week two. And the only loss for Broomfield was their opener against Pomona. They lost 41 to 38 back on August 31st. I'm guessing it was a little warmer that night, <laughs> but no shame in losing to Pomona either. By three points. Yeah, Pomona's ranked number four in 5A, and Broomfield was rallying back the whole time. They were down 20 to nothing early on in this game. And while we have a moment here, I just want to let you know that both of these teams, Marnark and Broomfield High School, would like to remind you that everyone at today's game, that whether you are a participant, a coach, or a spectator, cheer for your team and not against your opponent. The only true measure of good sportsmanship is cheering for your team and not against your opponents. Can you throw objects? Would that be poor sportsmanship? I don't know, unless if it's batteries. Here's the give to Marks on fourth down, and he's close. Marks again on the carry. He, he gets pushed the back. We'll see where they spot his forward progress. I think he got it, Bill. And your friend Nikki, Justin, brought us hot chocolate. She is my guardian angel tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll tell you who else is a guardian angel right now. How about the offensive line from Barnard? Just the way they've blown back. Broomfield, Marks drives his legs, and he just gets the first down. Clock keeps running. Monarch's first and goal to go. This game looks to be uh, on its last legs. Things do look bleak for the Eagles. The clock is running, and so are the Coyotes. Marks. Going for the corner, bumped out of bounds. Good hit by Kyle Holbrook preventing the touchdown. But they'll spot it at the one yard line. 
Yeah, second and goal to go from the one. Marks bouncing the ball to the outside. And if he's not tackled by the junior Holbrook, then he has a touchdown. Broomfield needs three more stops to stay in this game, Bill. And in for the touchdown is Marks. His second score of the night. And Monarch has opened up a 27 to nothing lead. Bill, uh, when I was at Colorado, Dan Honkins used to always say that the first five minutes are the most telling time in the second half. And this isn't the way at all Broomfield wanted to come out in the second half. Down 21 to nothing, you know, an early interception, and now they're down 27 to nothing with the extra point pending. Jamie Falloon's kick is up and it is good. So 28 for Monarch, nothing for Broomfield. We've seen Gary Davies coach teams before. The one thing we know about them, they'll keep scrapping and keep fighting, but tonight they just are, are overmatched. Uh, and again, I don't want to make excuses, but Broomfield's hurting up front. I mean, they've lost two of their big guys in uh, Justin and Justin Michelle. Yeah, some guys who are not ready. No, Andrew not ready. McLean, who's going to play football at West Point for Army, and that's a huge loss. He's one of the best players in the state. I'll tell you what, going to Army, those guys are a special breed of cat. And he's, he's in for an eye-opening experience, but I think he'll do quite well for Army. And you know another thing that you miss when you miss McLean? You miss the leadership. He's a captain on this team for Broomfield. You miss the leadership. You miss somebody who is that extra voice in that defensive huddle. You know, and you miss a stalwart up the middle. So they are playing some guys out of position, some guys maybe not quite ready yet, some younger guys. But hey, that's how you learn, and sometimes you get kicked in the teeth and you come back stronger. Anytime you have growth, growth hurts. And right now for Broomfield, they're going through growing pains to say the least. And but they still have a lot to play for. Definitely. I mean, this is just one game, and if they don't come back, uh, they'll be 7-2. and two. Not the worst thing in the world. And, be, and, and have one more game before they go into playoffs. Here's Falloon's kick. It is high. It is far. It is caught in the end zone for a touchback. <laughs> And again, you can't say enough about Barnark on offense. What they have done, they have dictated all day what they wanted to do to Broomfield on the offensive line at the point of attack. You could just look at the offensive line the next time Monarch gets the ball. They're pushing the line of Broomfield's defense at least three yards back every play, cutting down the, um, the DNs. It's a great performance by the line of Monarch. On a cold day, this is what they had to do to win, and they're doing very well so far. The life of a kicker. Jamie Falloon just kicks one into the end zone. Okay. After his extra point, he boots okay. one in the end zone, and he jogs off, and two guys congratulate him on a good kick. The rest of the team not paying any attention. <laughs> the life of a kicker. And the guys congratulating him, Preston Burns and Caleb Fenn. <laughs> they say, we got your back. No one else likes kickers, but we do. <laughs> McCulley turns the corner. Gets six yards. Bring up second down and four. Yeah, if you're Broomfield right now, I mean, the obvious is that you're down 28 to nothing. The hardest points to get in a football game are the first points, especially when you're down the, the type of deficit that Broomfield is. You just want to get something on the scoreboard, get the goose egg off the scoreboard. Yeah, you'd like to score quickly, but you'd like to score, period. At least give yourself a little bit of hope. 4.37 and counting, third quarter. A four touchdown advantage for the Coyotes of Monarch. They were 12 and one last year, seven and one so far this year. Here's Panacucci, first down out to the 40 yard line. 14 yard pickup and a first down. Love the call, the bubble screen to Panacucci. You run off McCulley to the left side on a swing route of the offense, of the offensive line. Um, you run your running back off, and then you have Penacucci coming under the line of scrimmage, catching the ball. Looks like a 15-yard gain at a first down. And this is all you want if you're Broomfield. You just want positive yards now. Angelo Perez. Slings it, complete to Penacucci. 
And it's down to the 43-yard line and a penalty. Might have a face mask. No, Bill, you're going to get this called back on a pass interference on the offense. Is it a pick play? Yeah, it's a pick play. You have a crossing route on uh, the near side of the line. Yeah. It will be. Yeah, if we, let's take a look back at that replay. and You'll see what I mean. Number 29, Michael Riston. He'll line up on the inside. You won't be able to see him on the replay. And then you have a pick play, which leaves Petacucci wide open on the slant route. That's not called that often. I don't know about that. Well, the reason why it was called was because number you know 29 wristed, he actually ran over the defensive back. Yeah, well, a lot of times you don't see that call. I don't know. I have to disagree with that penalty. Well, it's another tough call. So it's a 15 yard, yard yeah. penalty too, so it'll be first and 25. Ooh, no, no, second and 25 now, Bill. Se excuse me, second yeah. and 25 at the 25 yard line. So they have to get out to the 50. But again, it's, it's the story of the game, right, Bill? Penalties has hurting been. the progress of Monarch. And it looks to be third and 25, Bill. Okay, third and 25. And give up Straight the up the middle. That's McCulley. And he gets a great game. He gets a pickup of 19 yards, and it'll make it fourth and six. Do you go for it? No, it looks like the punt team is running out on the field. I would go for it. What do you have to lose? Well, there might be some confusion because I thought it was third down. Yeah. It, this should be third down, Bill. Okay, it will be third down. Gary <laughs> Davies raises his hands in the air like, hey, come on, let's get your act together. There's the official, Kirk Russell, not Kurt. Favorite actor of mine, I like Kurt Russell. Yeah, who doesn't? Good actor, he was a minor league baseball player, did you know that? No, I had no idea. Now you know, and his name isn't Kirk Russell either. It's like Kurt. It, no, or Kurt Russell, but it, he has a, different name is his real name. Oh, okay, okay. That, that's his movie star name. Anyway, third and six. Perez, downfield. Complete to Riston. And we're gonna have a flag. If anything, that should be defensive interference. See what they say. Bill, we should have a no call. Yeah, both guys went to the ball. It's defensive interference. Riston caught the ball anyway. He's going for the pick was Kid Sewell, but he's just as much entitled to the ball as the receiver. That looks like a makeup call to me, Bill. Great catch, by the way, um, by Riston. Riston on the play. Perez has 101 yards on the night, 17 attempts, wow. and nine completions. And one thing that we didn't mention in the game is that Perez is actually coming off of an injury. Usually Perez, he likes to roll out. We see him roll out to his right, roll out to his left, throw the ball off, roll it out. And then we'll see him actually, our quarterback Gibbs, run the ball. We haven't seen anything like that today. We've seen He's only Perez. been sacked once, and that was on a play where he really wasn't sacked. It was yeah. over his head, and then he slipped. Perez been, has been very one-dimensional today. McCauley. McCulley has a first down to the 25-yard line. Eagles playing with a little anger. And McCulley starting to rack up some yards. Well, now Broomfield has a little bit of momentum on offense. I would like to see the offense go a little bit faster here, you know, a little bit quicker pace. Your offense is starting to move the ball for the first time in the game. So let's, let's quicken up the pace just a little bit. You're not out of this game yet. McCulley, nine carries, 91 yards. Wow. It's about a 10 yard average clip. Ball's at the 26 of Monarch. McCulley again, straight up the middle. McCulley with room to the 10, five, dives. Touchdown, Broomfield. But hold everything. There is a penalty marker on the play. Holding oh. on.
John Broomfield. Oh, hurting Broomfield once again are the dreaded penalties. Take it away a touchdown this time. That was a beautiful run by McCulley. Yeah. All for naught. Well, let's, let's see if we can spot it. Yeah, again, a great run up the middle. And I don't see it. Oh, there you go. There it is right there. Yes. Whoever was blocking. Number 72 was yeah, tackled. 72. And it looked like that uh, Josh Hurst of Monarch was zeroing in for the tackle, and he got tackled. He takes away a that great a, run. It's a good call. Well, that takes away a great run. You yeah. know, the thing about holding this. But he might not have had a great run without the hold. Definitely. And, and just a quick thing on, on holding. Your hands are fine as long as they're on the inside. You can grab. But once they get on the outside of the pads, then it's holding every time. Pass is incomplete, intended for Ferguson. Covered by Peter Mitchell. Second down and 20. Ball on the 33 of Monarch. The one thing I always said is that whenever, or that has been taught to me as a player, is that whenever you're first and 20, second and 20, is that you want to get half back. So here, try to get half back. As you see how cold it is outside, again, well, it's I see one kid down here. He's in a baseball hat and a T-shirt. <laughs> and he's trying to act as if the weather is not affecting him, but he is cold. How good it is to be young. Sometimes young doesn't mean smart, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Flag on the play. Offside on Monarch, so move it five yards closer. Call it second down and 15 from the 28. Well, anything helps if you're a Broomfield now. You take all the yards that you can get. Stops the clock here. I'd like to see a ball be, you know, a ball thrown up to Dan Purse. You know, Purse, a tall, wide receiver, has a lot of speed. He's going to have man-on-man -man coverage on the outside. See if the ball goes to him. McCulley looking for some room. Nowhere. <laughs> Blowing up that play was Connor Fitzgerald. We've mentioned his name several times tonight. Third down and 13. Well, McC ball. Yeah, McCulley had nowhere to go to give sweep to the outside. And you know, Bill, again, because Angelo Perez is not a threat to run today, that play is not as effective as it usually is. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Nowhere to Arthur hide. And the Vandellas. That's it. Big third down for the Eagles. Keeper by the quarterback and getting about three yards is Perez. So fourth down and ten. You got to go for it. Yeah, four down territory. This is where you give the ball, you put the ball in the hands of Perez, and you tell him to go and throw it to your playmaker. Again, Purse is the guy who's your tallest, fastest receiver. He's on. He's locked up with number 16, Jeff Carey. Clary, man on man. Little swing pass, and that's not going to get it done. G was the receiver, and he was chopped down by Bruce Oliver. Oliver's been all over the field, and he is just a sophomore. Mm. That bodes well for the future of the Monarchs. Well, try to catch Monarch a little bit off guard with that swing pass, and you want to get it to your playmaker, hoping that Carter G can break a couple of tackles. It didn't happen there. Turnover on downs. Monarch has the ball with 17.1 seconds left to go in and the third quarter. The crowd in, on the Broomfield side is starting to thin like my hair. The kid in the t-shirt though is still here. <laughs> Let's see if he makes it the whole whole game. I don't think his mom would be too happy about uh, him being outside in 20, 20 degree weather. Marks plunges forward for a yard. That will do it for the third quarter of play. So Monarch led 21 to nothing at the break, Add seven in the third quarter to take a 28 lead over Broomfield into quarter number four. We'll be right back.
get a camera over there just to look at that. Uh -huh. And we get set for the fourth quarter of play. Monarch 28, Broomfield nothing. Monarch faces a second and nine from their own 25-yard line after holding Broomfield on downs the previous possession, thereby preserving the shutout for the time being. Here's a pitch. And dancing down the left sideline is Kid Sewell. And he gets to the 42 of Broomfield before he's tackled by Nathan Aragon. So a good play to start the fourth quarter for the Coyotes. Take a look, take a look at the replay. You see the way that Kitzel gets the ball on a quick pitch, sweeps it to the outside. Look at just the way that you have a seal there and a seal there. You run up the alley. What a great run there by Sewell. He keeps his legs moving. He's tackled there. No, breaks another tackle of Panacucci. Uh, you know, to me, it looks like that uh, Broomfield, I'm not going to say that they don't want to tackle right now, but uh, once it's cold and you're down by so much, it gets harder to get your nose in the grindstone. Braden yeah, Pape gets a yard, maybe two. Did not see a fumble. Oh, I don't know there. If, if we have a replay, I'd like to see that replay. Do we have a fumble on that play? Goodness. We don't have the replay. But again, right in front of our booth is a kid in a Broomfield baseball cap and a T-shirt. And I, I'm going to predict he will not last the entire fourth quarter. I say he does. Put some hot chocolate on it. Okay, well, he's going to need some hot chocolate. <laughs> Might need a flamethrower to thaw him out after this game. Well, he's, he's more animate right now. I guess he's more animate to stay warm. He's trying to stay warm. <laughs> As we see if we can get a shot of him. Second down and eight. Marks inside the 30, down to about the 33-yard line as he continues to chew up yardage. He has been outstanding tonight. That was his 32nd carry, 174 yards. Goodness. Second highest rushing total of the season tonight for Marks. His they have just been just tremendously efficient. Well, they, Monarch has dictated to the defensive line of Broomfield where they're going to run, how they're going to run. And there's another first down run by Marks. Stutter steps. Marks in the clear. Touchdown. Ooh, you might get a late hit there. You will. Yeah, late hit penalty there on Panacucci. A 32-yard touchdown scamper. He goes over 200 yards. And then the personal foul penalty on Broomfield. Frustration showing. And the Coyotes up 34 to nothing. And Justin, how frustrating is it for a defense to know what's coming and not be able to stop it? You just seen it right there with the personal foul penalty with Panacucci. There's nothing you can do. You put nine in the box, which is how, how as Broomfield has it right now, and you still can't stop it. Again, they're missing their big boys up front. Andrew McLean out for the whole for the rest of the season with the knee injury. And Bill, I know we talk about the next man up, and you know, that's a cliche, and we like to say that. But on games like this, where you have a team as Monarch who is a primary running team, you need your big uglies up front, and Broomfield's missing it. Falloon tacks on the extra point to make it 35 to nothing in favor of Monarch, and I guess now the only drama is two, twofold. Yes. Can Broomfield break the shutout? Okay. And two, is the kid in the t-shirt gonna last the whole game? <laughs> well, we'll see. Let's take a look at the replay. Again, a quick pitch to the outside. And uh, again, Marks takes the ball up the middle, and he's not touched. Again, not touched, makes a move here. Excuse me, young man, as he gives him uh, the safety, the uh, stiff arm, and runs it to the end zone. And you'll see at the end of this play, Panacucci just knock him over as he's already in the end zone. Can't do that, young man. You'll get a personal foul penalty right. he, every time. He gave the stiff arm, but there was no one to give the stiff arm to because he faked him out so well. <laughs> yeah, we like to call that the, the L stick, Bill. Uh, we say left and right. That's on, uh, on PlayStation, and here's that's a, what he did. Here's a serious question okay. for you. So many times as the uh, Coyotes will kick off from the 45, you may see an onside kick here. Okay. But so many times you see 
a running back stiff arm a defender right in the face mask. Yes. Why is that not face masking? Well, the reason why it's not face masking is because he doesn't grab onto the face mask. I've seen it grab, though, too. Yes. Well, and it's uh, never called. Well, as long as uh, the way that it's written in the rule book is that as long as the hand is open, your palm is open, you could put your hand anywhere on his body. But a defender does that to an offensive player, and it's a face mask. Well, because it's a danger to the runner. And he boots it through the end zone. Last time, two players congratulated Falloon for the touchback as he gets his tee at the 45. Okay, let's see who does it. He's jogging off the field. Okay. Okay. There's one, two, three. Four. All right, a few more guys. Oh, okay. He has a, okay. Little, he has a caravan there. Yeah. A little, a little fan club. They must have heard you, Bill. Maybe they did. Maybe they heard the, <laughs> the dopey announcer complaining that he wasn't getting enough love from his teammates, and now they're all... All his pals. So Broomfield will start first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Down 35 to nothing. In the middle it goes to McCulley. And he gets a yard maybe before he's crunched. Yeah, hit hard by Sewell. And also on, on that tackle with a good hit was John Sanders. And there's McCulley coming off the field. Broomfield penalties tonight, nine for 74 oh, yards. Fine. Monarch, three for 15. No, it's fine. That's it. That's it. That's it. In a game like this, Bill, where you need, you don't need everything exactly to go right, but you cannot hurt yourself with penalties. And every penalty that has gone against Broomfield has stalled the drives. They had to have a clean game tonight, Broomfield, playing shorthanded. And they did penalties, turnovers. And ball's knocked out of bounds as three players converge on Angelo Perez. Perez looking to go deep on the play. Good coverage by Marnark, and he had a scramble. Ball was knocked out, so the ball will be spotted where the ball was knocked out at. Now, you've been in games where you've won by a large margin yes, yes. in cold weather, and probably games where you've also lost uh, in cold weather by a large margin. It's not quite as cold on the sideline of Monarch right now. No, not at all. Uh, you're excited, you're ecstatic, you couldn't be any warmer. But if you're Broomfield, you feel every bit cold right now. As McCulley has the first down, but a penalty on the play. Well, story of the game, huh? Story of the game for Broomfield. This game has just deteriorated for the Eagles. And again, that nullifies Nice run by McCulley. Well, if you're Broomfield now, you play for next week. What I mean by that is you, you practice, you play right now like the game is close. You take whatever momentum that you have from the game that you have at the end of the game, and you take it towards the next game. Um, and, and also, I would say you're playing for the playoffs now. Um, the competitive place, placement of this game is pretty much done and over with. Well, a you lot of times play, you learn from your mistakes. Right, and there's right. plenty to learn from this game. And you know what? You probably will get another shot at Monarch in the playoffs. It happened last year. Yes, it did. Last year in the regular season game, Monarch crushed Broomfield 42-14 to right here at Elizabeth Kennedy Stadium. It looks like a sideline warning wow. on Broomfield. But then in the playoffs, Monarch was able to hold off Broomfield 23-21. to Yeah, on a last-second field goal, Monarch won that game. Are they going to call it unsportsmanlike conduct? Dead ball foul, so it'll be just they're racking up the penalties. Not what you want to see from Broomfield. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, not what you want to see. That's where discipline is starting to fall apart. Definitely. And Gary Davies can't be too pleased with what he's seeing right now. McCulley from the shotgun runs it out to the 15-yard line on a third and 18. So that'll bring up a fourth down, and the punting unit comes on. So again, penalties, the story of the night, or one of the stories for Broomfield. By the way, McCulley, 12 carries for 97 yards. He's been the best player tonight, I would say, for the Eagles. Penalties, 11 for 94 yards. Remember the last time Broomfield punted, it was blocked. Another penalty flies. Reeves' kick will bounce at the 50, gets a good roll out of bounds at the Monarch 42-yard line. 
But we have two penalties. There's some trash talking going on now down on the field. And the back judge called, or the referee called two penalties. You were, you're going to have um, an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on number 60, Austin Harris, who gave a shot to one of the Monarch players. All right, legal procedure on Broomfield. Personal foul okay. on Monarch. Sometimes you catch the retaliatory okay. infraction. Well, I was wrong. I could admit it. I'm a big, I'm a big hey, guy. You know. I've made a mistake once. So the officials will sort out. It should be a first down for Broomfield, an automatic first down. You don't want this game to get out of hands. It's in the hands right now of the referees. So they'll move him five back on the illegal procedure. Then the dead ball foul should be a first down. Oh, there's not, why isn't that not an automatic first down? Well, the yardage doesn't equal out to a first down. Well, I thought in high school football, personal fouls are automatic. Yeah, you, you would think a personal foul would be an automatic first down, but it's not here, or Our, not in this case. Guy with the t-shirt still here, by the way, with 8.14 to go. We'll keep you posted on that. The kicker is Spencer Reeb, a senior. He'll boot it away again. The Got penalty it. makes it fourth and six at the 25-yard line. Here's the official again. Okay. I don't know what he was talking about there, but it is a first down. Okay, Bill, so what's happened is Monarch will take the yardage. So the ball originally is out of bounds on the punt on a 37-yard line. So Monarch declined the, um, not illegal procedure, but not, not having enough men on the line penalty. So the 15 yards from the personal, from the personal foul will be assessed. So Monarch should start the ball if they're marking it off on the 43. They'll start to they start to drive on the 28. Okay, I'll buy it. Pretty clear. <laughs> Close enough. I was Close shivering enough. there a little bit. Close enough. <laughs> some Broomfield fans are coming back for some reason. They may have gone into the parking lot, warmed up in their cars. A luxury that the Monarch fans don't have because they have to walk a lot further to the parking lot. Well, no one from Monarch has left the stands, especially the student section. They have a big broom there for somewhere uh, for a sweep or something like that. Well, maybe broom field. Yeah, there you go. Cole Watson, the quarterback. And here's the give, and here's Marks again. Marks is flying oh, down boy. the field. It's a foot race. Marks puts on the brakes, cuts it inside before he's finally tackled at the 19-yard line. And we'll take another look because there's another whistle. Well, it's, it's another pitch, quick pitch to the outside. This time Marks runs on the outside, and then reverses fields midway, and he's off to the races. Only guy that could catch him is Panacucci, who has the angle on him. So what does Marks do? Well, excuse me, I'll do an inside run. Change fields again before he's tackled. Long gain for uh, Marks as he's down at the 20 yard 53 line. 53 yard gain. Wow. He has 259 yards on the night. I'm gonna call this the sardine formation because they are just so packed in every play. Well, this is the double wing T formation, Bill. And I'm gonna call it the sardine formation. Okay, well, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. The, you're the man, you're the guy here. You're the, you're, you're the guy calling the game. Technically, <laughs> you're right. Untechnically, I'm going to call it the sardine formation. They're just packed in. Well, and it keeps you warm. Yeah, it's a good formation tonight. And the give goes to Pape, and he gets nothing. This has been a very impressive performance tonight by Monarch. On the road, cold weather. Against the team that's won seven in a row. Granted, they are a little bit shorthanded tonight, Broomfield, with the injuries. But I expected a much closer and tighter game. Well, yeah, must win. They just cannot stop the offensive attack. And Conference. we said it before, just frustrating when you know what's going to come. And you can't stop it. Conference time on the line. And Monarch has just dictated whatever they want to Broomfield. 
And dancing down the left side, close to the goal line before getting tackled is Kid Sewell. See where they spot it. Sewell getting up slowly. As this artificial turf, it's probably a little hard because of the cold temperatures. Taking a look at the replay. Look at the great block there by the uh, tight end. Again, a missed tackle for Broomfield as Sewell runs to the outside. And uh, he's tripped up and tackled hard there at the two yard line. Sewell had a tough time getting up on that last run as he trots off to the sideline. Well, he's a little tired. He's run for 110 yards tonight. Ooh. New man in the backfield, it's Philip Bubernak, number four. He gets the carry, straight up the middle. Big pileup. Don't think he's in. Second down and goal from inside the one. And the offensive line of Monarch has simply manhandled and taken over this game. One of the guys up front, Josh Hurst, also Austin Beswick, has done a fine job. Andrew Dorsey, the tight end. And there's how far they have to go for another touchdown. I wonder Less again, than a yard. Yeah, I wonder again what they're going to call. I'm guessing a run up the middle to Bubernak. Get him in on the scoring action. Bubernak, touchdown. <laughs> Good call. I am a part-time offensive coordinator. <laughs> That's one thing. People who watch football, everybody wants to call plays. Everybody throw the ball this, sweep it there, do this. Well, it looks like just three play calls have been uh, called for Monarch. Pitch left, quick pitch left, quick pitch right. Sweep left, sweep right. Nothing fancy. Here's Jamie Falloon to try to add the 42nd point. Another high snap, and the kick is through. Watson again, very good job holding. Yeah, yes. Monarch averages 40 points per game, so now they're up to 42 points as we look at the touchdown. And they're going to run the clock. Yeah, by Bubernat. And it's mercy rule as the time will just roll. Bubernat on a quick pitch right up the middle. Look at that offensive yeah. surge. Pancake City. Uh, I wonder if they have a lot of, uh, Monarchs should have a lot of syrup today because there's been yeah. nothing but pancakes Maybe all they ate day. at the Waffle House tonight. Good. They serve pancakes at the Waffle House, right? We should go to the Waffle House afterwards. Every time I think of waffles, why does Belgium get credit for such great waffles? Well, you know, it's, somebody has to get credit for Belgian it. waffles. Why, why are waffles so great in Belgium? We have the hamburger. Yeah, true. Oh. Kid in the t-shirt still here. He's looking at his hand as if it's frozen. <laughs> Maybe no, it no is. No gloves, no scarf, no jacket. 20 degree weather? Sure, I'd come outside with just a t-shirt on. Maybe he's from Alaska and thinks it's kind of warm tonight. <laughs> so Falloon will kick off. His last two kicks have gone out of the end zone. And kicking a ball in this weather is like kicking a cinder block. Mm -hmm. And a high kick, end over end. It's taken by Panacucci at the two. He'll have a chance to the 15, and he's tripped up. Goes down at the 18-yard line. So can Broomfield break the shutout? That is the question. Well, the Broomfield will run out. Will they run out Perez, at quarterback? I know a lot of people will look at the newspaper tomorrow or look online. And I'll give the Denver Post some credit. They do a fine job covering prep sports. So does MaxPreps.com. Yeah. Yes. And uh, people will see the score and say, whoa, is that a misprint? Yeah, well. I tell you, I am very impressed with Monarch. Yes. And coming into the game at quarterback is Caleb Cox, a oh. sophomore, quarterback of the future for the Eagles. So he's going to get some experience here. Cox played a little bit last week. He had one pass he thrown and completed against Montbello getting him some experience. Up the middle. There you and go. a good carry. Down the sidelines. Great carry. Look at him go. That is DJ Zissimos. Touchdown, Broomfield. And the shutout is averted. Zissimos gives the fans 
Something to cheer about. Good heavens. The longest play of the game for Broomfield. Just a simple give up the middle to the running back. Zissimos takes it all the way. A long touchdown run. Finally, with 2.11 left to go in the game, Broomfield is on the board. What's going through a guy's mind in that situation? Just not trip? Don't catch me. Please don't catch me. Please Just don't keep me. running. <laughs> I don't Must look a long way, 82 yards. Let's not do a Eric, let's not do a Eric Decker. How about that? Yeah. Catch the ball and just fall on your face. <laughs> that was embarrassing for an NFL player. So the extra point, Pat Lalancet knocks it through. He's 31 of 32 now on extra points this year. So it's 42 to seven. Yeah, let's take a look one more time back at the run. A long run, 82 yards, and you'll see just great blocking. Look at that blocking by the young man. Another pancake. I just breaking love tackles, too. Pancakes. Breaking Another broken tackles, tackle. Stiff arm, and he's off to the races. And he's there's saying, no Don't fall. One. Don't fall. <laughs> Don't catch me. Don't drop the ball. Keep going. This Go, is buddy. a long run. Run, buddy, run. Where's the end zone? <laughs> there it is. <sighs> now where's the oxygen? <laughs> that was a fine run. That might be the play of the game, actually. It's funny, you have Marks with 259 yards, but that might have been the best run of the game. Yeah. So a minute four and counting, uh, the running clock. Broomfield, they will drop to seven and two overall, and three and one and in Mountain Conference yes, and, play. And, and they will drop in the standings also. Yeah. Monarch will improve to eight and one overall, seven game winning streak, and they are atop the Mountain with a four and oh record. It will be official in a few seconds. Well, let me ask you, Bill, with a performance that Monarch has uh, shown tonight, Broomfield was the number one team in 4A. Monarch came in number three. Would you put Monarch number one? Yes, I would. Okay. I'd have them leapfrog number two. Okay. Who's, who's number two? I Good question. I, th I believe it's Ponderosa. Ponderosa is undefeated. And your Montbello team, 0-3 in league play, 2-6 yeah. overall. Yeah, you know what? Like I said last year, Justin Adams is not walking through that door. <laughs> so up next for Monarch, they play their final regular season game next Thursday night at Stanley Lake. And Broomfield, they will take on Golden next Friday night. Our next game will be at Holy Family against Denver North. So our final score, Monarch 42, Broomfield 7, the team's shaking hands. And the Monarch crowd now coming over to taunt the Broomfield crowd. Uh oh. So let's, let's, there's a kid, uh, this is not good. They're flipping off players uh, and uh, coaches. Well, you, this is where you have the coaches get everything under control. Yeah. You know, the, the fans have, have a right to be excited as they're. Yeah, but don't, don't become a yeah. thief. Don't act like a jerk. No reason. Cheer to your you. team, congratulate the losers for a, a fine effort and then be with it. You don't want to see any episodes or incidents. But they are jubilant, as you can imagine. Again, if I'm Broomfield, I put this in the back of my mind, and I say, we'll see you in the playoffs. And Justin, I will see you during the post-game show. We'll head down to the field. Again, our final score, Monarch 42, Broomfield 7. Our coverage continues right after this. Monarch Coyotes improved to 8-1 on the season. Broomfield drops to 7-2. Monarch 42, Broomfield 7. And Justin, in the opening we said that Broomfield's going to have to slow down the running game of the Coyotes. They didn't do it. Monarch 412 yards rushing tonight. Wow. And all started and ends with Marks and Jason Sewell. And just the way that they have ran the ball today, they did a great job of dictating to uh, Broomfield, the defensive line of Broomfield, the offensive line of Martin Archers did a great job today, and, and that's what was the turning point in the game, was that they just couldn't stop it. Broomfield could not stop this running attack. Yeah, and Monarch had zero yards passing. You knew they were going to run the ball, and they were still able to do it effectively. Broomfield, though, didn't help themselves with penalties. Penalties killed drives early in the game. Let's go back to the first quarter. 
you have two long returns that are called back because of block in the back penalty. Then you have another one that's called back because of a holding penalty. Then you have on the first drive, you have a turnover. You have a tipped pass that turns into an interception. Anytime something like that happens, especially on a rivalry game like tonight, with everything on the line, good things won't happen for you. I have to believe Monarch will be the favorite when the playoffs roll around in two weeks to win a state championship. They're certainly going to be in the mix, but don't count Broomfield out. Not at all. You still have the heart of a champion, as I would call them. Injuries have hurt Broomfield. I mean, it's well documented today. Monarch has, has totally exposed that. But again, if Angela Perez can heal up, have a great performance next week, uh, Broomfield-wise, I could see Broomfield doing something in the playoffs. One coach at Denver South told me that Broomfield is the best team that he has seen all season. Tonight, it didn't look so that way tonight. But again, I see big things for Broomfield in the playoffs. Yeah, these games happen once in a while, and for Broomfield, the short end. And credit Monarch, they played a sensational game on both sides of the ball, including special teams. As for us, we look ahead. Next week, we'll be at Holy Family against Denver North. And I certainly hope it's a little warmer than tonight. I hope so too, Bill. You know, for next week for Holy Family, it will be a tune-up playing against Denver North going forward towards the playoffs. And to just update you, the kid in the t-shirt did last the entire oh. game. And now they're taking him out on a stretcher. And uh... so, so I owe you, huh? <laughs> I owe you some hot chocolate. <laughs> anyway, great job by our crew tonight, working under tough conditions, uh, led by Victor Seif, also our stat man, Connor Shreve. So for everybody at Channel 8, Justin Adams, I'm Bill Rogan. Our final score again, Monarch 42, Broomfield 7. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next week at Holy Family.